Hello good people of YouTube, welcome to episode 19 of What Makes This Song Special. Uh, by now I presume most of you know the format, I'm going to take a song, talk a little bit about what the song makes me remember in my past and the soundtrack to my life. I'll then talk a wee bit about the singer and in part two I will do a cover version of the song. This week's song is going to be Take On Me by Norwegian 80s pop band AHA. Um, so I'll start with my wee story as always. Um, my story starts, it was spring 1999 um, and I was just about to graduate from high school, graduate the word uh, that you Americans use. Um, not so much in, in the UK, I don't know what we call it, but we were going to graduate from high school and I was finishing my final exams and at the beginning of that final year at school we all had to vote for a, a head boy and a head girl um, to be in charge of the sort of student year council. Um, it was a wee nod to democracy of some sort, although it turned into a huge mess and anyone watching who went to school with me at the time knows exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but anyway, maybe sometimes it's it's best leaving um, adults in charge of big decisions and not teenagers. But anyway, um, I'd been voted in as deputy head boy um, and I kind of enjoyed the title from a sort of vanity project perspective, but I quickly realised that the title came with some extra responsibilities. So there were pros and cons of the position. Um, part of my job was to help out at various events in the school. And I remember one one afternoon um, at lunchtime, uh, one of the teachers, Mr Reed, who was the kind of head of the, the senior students at the time, Really nice guy. He was one of the few teachers that you could kind of have a laugh with and wouldn't treat you like a child. Um, but he asked if I could help out at an upcoming disco. Like it was a kind of third and fourth year school disco. And they wanted me and a couple of other um, students uh, higher up the school to sort of help out. Um, and I tried to get out of it, but it was no use. And he sort of... Um, promised that I could ask another responsible member of my year group to help too. So I immediately thought of my friend Anthony Dempsey, who I think I spoke about in the Christopher Cross sailing episode. I'll leave a link um, if you've not seen that episode already. Shameless promotion for my own videos. But um, So we'd been in bands together and Anthony was always up for a laugh. He was always up for a so carry on. So I thought I could probably talk him into coming with me on the promise of some mischief. I I don't know what I had in mind at the time, but I knew if it was me and Anthony would think of we would think of something that we could uh, keep ourselves amused on the on the evening. So when it arrived and we turned up, we sort of vowed to help out and keep the the younger students uh, on their best behaviour, and we did well for about half an hour, and then of course we got completely bored with just standing around watching third and fourth year kids um, enjoy their disco. And out of nowhere, an opportunity arose because there were, so there, there were three or four sort of principal teachers attending the disco as well, all helping to look after everything and keep everything in check. And they were all communicating via walkie-talkie. And one of them, Mr Conley, who had been my old chemistry teacher, left his walkie-talkie line on the table where they'd been collecting the tickets for the evening. So I can't remember who made the first move, but either me or Tony, one of us grabbed a walkie-talkie and we made our way up the stairs to sort of hide from, from view. And we went up to the Modern Languages Department where the French and German classrooms were. Um, and it was a big school and the whole of the upstairs part of the school was in complete darkness. So... We sort of tiptoed around upstairs just using the moonlight and streetlights from the roads outside coming through the windows as a guide to see where we were going. And we ended up in one of the German classrooms and crouched down behind the desks and then we started our game. Uh, I don't think we'd either of us had spoken about it at this point. I think we both just knew what we were going to do. Um, we'd heard the teachers use these walkie-talkies for years and we always laughed at the silly names. They used to give each other these daft names as if they were like soldiers in the army. They would give each other these silly names. So they would use code names on the walkie-talkies like Condor and Eagle and these types of things. So 
we all, I mean, this gave us a lot of amusement even before this evening. Um, but me and Tony, we knew exactly how to start the prank. So doing my best sort of adult voice, um, I press the button on the side of the walkie-talkie and I say, Condor 1 to Eagle 2. There's been a couple of kids spotted heading out of the disco and into the science classrooms. Something like that. Over. And, uh, and we sat giggling, waiting for a response. And then we got the response a couple of seconds later. Heading there now, Condor. And the two of us were dying. Literally rolling around the floor, laughing, thinking, this is amazing. We've, we've destroyed them. We've done them. The teachers have fallen into their trap. And this is going to be an exciting evening after all. Um, and of course, we couldn't leave it there. We couldn't just leave it as one small prank. It had to, it had to evolve and develop into a much bigger prank. So we continued with more false sightings of these fabricated lads that we'd apparently seen spotted or who'd apparently been spotted roaming around the school in the dark. Um, and this went on for, I mean, it must have been about half an hour. And there were teachers and janitors going around the school with torches and walkie-talkies on this wild goose chase. Um, it was incredible, of course, uh, until it backfired on us. Um, they were, after all, searching every corner of the school for these rogue lads. And in the end, they made their way up to the classrooms that we were hiding in. So there was nowhere to go. Um, we saw the lights in the corridor outside the classroom go on and the teachers all shouting for these rogue lads to come out. Uh, and we were hiding underneath one of the teacher's desks inside the German classroom, anticipating them coming into every classroom one by one. And of course, in the end, they burst into the classroom we were in and immediately saw us crouched underneath the desk. And they were furious. And it only took them about 20 seconds to realise that, of course, there had been no boys leaving the disco to wander around the school other than the two of us. So we were the two boys who had been... Um, wandering around the school so the thing was at that age because we were just about to leave school I think at this point we maybe had two or three months left of, of school maybe maybe not even a couple of months and they didn't even bother phoning our parents like you would have had earlier in the school you would have your parents at the, at the school and they they just kicked us out they just told us to get out and we had to report to the head teacher's office at 9am the following morning and I remember as we walked away towards the, the main entrance or main exit of the school, I remember Mr. Reed just shouting, and you can forget about going to your school prom. And that was the worst part because we were already worried that we were in big trouble, but we were gutted about the fact that he told us we couldn't go to the school prom because this was something that all the students had been really excited about for months. We'd been talking about how great the prom was going to be and how we were all going to get there and what kind of um, people had been talking about, well, well, hiring limos to go to the school, but all this kind of crazy stuff. And it was exciting and, you know, I'd actually, as deputy head boy, I'd been helping organise some of the, the the sort of things for the evening of the prom as well. So we'd been really looking forward to it and now we were told we weren't allowed to go. So we we were really gutted and, uh, and we walked back to Tony's house with our tails between our legs, and we thought, "Oh God, that really backfired on us." That was, I mean, that was an amazing prank, great fun, but probably wasn't worth it. And we got back to to Tony's. Um, I'd phoned my mum to come pick me up from from Tony's house, and and they, meanwhile, we stuck on his famous hi-fi system, which I think again I mentioned um, in that previous episode where I talked about me and Tony and the band that we were in, um, but. Yeah, he was always trying to get me into different bands and stuff. So he sticks on the hi-fi and at one point, Tony just got up and started dancing in his living room, doing all these crazy, crazy dance moves. And I was just laughing. And eventually, for some reason, I got up and tried to copy the dance moves that he was doing as well. I've never enjoyed dancing. I've never been good at it. And I don't think I can remember any other time in my life where I've danced in a pal's house sober, eh, definitely. Um, but we just danced about Tony's living room laughing, trying to forget that we'd been banned from the prom and uh, and listening to Take On Me, The Sun Always Shines on TV, those two songs in particular. In fact, I wasn't even sure which of the two songs that I was going to do the cover version of for today's episode. I thought maybe The Sun Always Shines on TV. I really love that song as well, but I decided to go with Take On Me just because it's 
it's probably the more popular choice. It's the bigger, it's the bigger hit. So, um, so that's the one I'm going to cover at the end. But um, yeah, the next morning uh, came round and we had to go to the the headmaster's office at nine a.m. Of course, and I remember heading into the into his office and. Uh, I remember all the teachers, there were like three principal teachers there and the head teacher and they just stood around these desks and so we, we stood and waited, I waited uh, whatever was about to, to come to us. So I remember them all standing looking really serious and Mr Reid said, you know, have you got anything to say for yourselves? And we obviously apologised and admitted that we'd taken what was supposed to be kind of a little joke too far and we were deeply regretful etc etc and then there was this silence I remember thinking oh god where, where's this going and then they all just burst in, like, into laughter they just all started laughing and there was this awkward moment where then me and Tony obviously started laughing as well because we were thinking right they're all laughing we'll start laughing or be out of trouble here um, and we all just giggled away about it and I remember Mr Reed saying look I'm not going to ruin your last memories of high school over a silly prank. You know, we'll forget about it um, as long as you promise to behave for the remainder of your high school days. Um, absolute legend of a teacher, really nice guy. And as I say, um, so he's let us off the hook, which is amazing. And we breathed a huge sigh of relief and headed off to class, laughing some more as we walked down the corridor at our fantastic luck, thinking that obviously the, the prank had been worth it after all. So... So that's my wee story. That's that's what the the songs, the ha, aha songs, take on me, and the sun always shines on TV. They they always remind me of um, that that period of my life, that era. You know, the end of school, um, and in particular that that night where we pulled that fantastic prank and uh, almost get um, kicked out of uh, well, kicked out of prom. We weren't at prom yet, but almost got omitted from prom. Uh, due to our actions so I'll, I'll talk a wee bit about the the band obviously the singer as I always do so Aha are a Norwegian synth pop band um, from Oslo which is the capital of Norway um, and I think they were formed in 1982 but they kind of rose to worldwide success around about the mid 80s with hits like The Sun Always Shines on TV, The Living Daylights which I'm sure was used in a James Bond movie uh, and of course Take On Me and some other great songs as well um, lead singer Morton Harkett has he's got a beautiful voice really easy listening tone um, and a kind of individual distinctive voice because of that slight Norwegian accent that creeps in on certain words and phrases there's not enough of an accent for it to sound you know unusual, I don't mean unusual but just for it to not sound like a a British or American pop song but there's enough of that to make it sound interesting which is really cool um, a great range helped massively by his well connected head voice so and one of the myths I thought I'd bring this up but one of the myths of the singing world is that people have to push more air to have power or to create volume or to get to high notes um, and this always frustrates me when I hear singing teachers and vocal coaches using the statement just push more air. If they studied any recent science, they would realise that it's more about holding back on the amount of air you're pushing, but compressing the airflow at the chords. And it this so this basically compressing the airflow at the glottis, which is this space between the chords that we give a name to, the glottis. And this means there's more of a closure to aperture ratio at the vocal chords more ability to hold on to a breath or a note for longer without constantly being air hungry. So you get more, more control over your voice. Um, Morton is great at this and proved it, um, proved how good he is at this technique um, when he held a note for 20.2 seconds in AHA's track Summer Moved On, um, which is believed to be the longest note in UK chart history bit of information for you there. Anyway, I won't bore you further with vocal technique. If you need to learn more about vocal technique, of course, you can get in touch and we can um, book in for a vocal session. Um, that's it for today's episode. It's quite a short one today, but a wee story. Um, yeah, that's what the song reminds me of. Take on me. I think about fifth and sixth year at school. 
particularly that that night where me and Tony danced around in his living room trying to forget about the fact that we'd just been told we weren't allowed to go to our school prom and of course the, the giggles that we had um, whilst performing our great prank on the teachers. Um, that's it for today. If you'd like to tune in to any more episodes, there are now, this is episode 19, so there are now another 18. If you're just tuning in now for the first time, there are another 18 um, episodes, cover versions, some stories and some information about singers. Um, I'll be here next week with another story, another song. And thank you again for listening. See you next week. <laughs>